Hello, friends. Welcome to Level Up with Debbie Neal. I am your host. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here, right now with you. This podcast is all about leveling up in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for being here. I am so grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we are leveling up. You ready? Hello, my Level Up friends and family. Last week, I interviewed my accountant and I invited him on my podcast because quite honestly, he's amazing and he has changed my business. He's changed my finances. And this is why I love word of mouth advertising so much. It didn't financially benefit me at all to bring Richard on. And I don't say that to impress you, but to impress upon you, like if I'm going to stand behind something, there's a really big reason why I'm standing behind it. And I brought him on because in my heart, I know the value that he has the potential to bring to your life. So I encourage you to just listen to last week's episode, listen with an open mind, listen with an open heart, have a conversation. It is so worth it. And I'm also a really big believer, and I said this on last week's podcast, like if we're unorganized or we avoid a certain part of our life or our business, it will hold us back from expanding. So if we're not very organized in our finances or it's something that we just don't know that much about or we avoid it, or it's like as an entrepreneur, you're making money and you're kind of scrambling at tax time, like that holds you back from the next level. So have that conversation. It's so worth it. Every person that uses him as a result of my referral, I can't speak for everybody because I'm trying to be the, that I referred, has thanked me over and over and over. Okay. So this week, we're going to be talking about taking action, moving, taking the leap. So what are your goals for this year? What do you want to accomplish to achieve this year? What phone calls to friends or loved ones are you putting off? How is your healthy lifestyle journey going? How is your commitment to exercise going? How is your morning routine going? This is a really good check-in. So if you're listening to this on the day that it drops, we're about two months into the year. We have 10 whole months left, but at the same time, you only have 10 months left in the year. What? Because you think about it, like, two months have gone by. What's your mindset? Today is day one or one day, right? One day. It's a choice. Own your choices. You know, this week on a totally different note, you guys, there I heard of like a few like really sad passings. So one, one, um, a, a friend of mine, Teresa Van, I don't, I don't, I want, I want to, um, give her privacy. So maybe I won't say her last name, but her name is Teresa. And she lost her daughter, Sarit, at 24 years old. I, I went to a funeral of a 24-year-old. And, and then, then in the same week, David Hollis. I don't know if you follow David Hollis. You know, Rachel Hollis. She probably doesn't want to be known as Rachel Hollis's ex-husband, but he, he's made a name for himself. But he passed this week. And, and I'm sure most of you, like me, when we hear of devastating news or we experience devastation, like at that very moment, like this week, I remember thinking like, again, life is so short. Life is so precious. He, it was a 24-year-old beautiful girl. And David Hollis is a 47-year-old young dad in great shape, takes great. And you know, when you get to know somebody on Instagram, it's like you feel like you know them, right? And we're, we're reminded over and over again how short and precious life is. And then somehow... After a period of time, we fall back into our old habits, habits of thinking we have endless tomorrows. And that might sound like kind of morbid. It's not meant to, but you guys, that's the reality. Like we don't have endless tomorrows. Are you putting off a phone call? Maybe like a talk with somebody. Are you putting off a goal, a decision? We procrastinate and we hold ourselves back from the life that we're meant to have. And my friends, Many of you guys have probably heard this before, but life isn't measured by the breaths we take. They're measured by the moments that take our breath away, like living in the moment, by giving love, by making a difference, by expressing our feelings, by being fully present, by putting our phones down, by making eye contact, by listening, by making others feel like they're the only people in that room living on purpose living with intent, 
taking bold action, standing in your truth, setting big goals, building a huge business, dreaming big. You guys, I could go on and on, expanding your vision. So together, let's do a check-in right now. So I, I just wanted to touch on a few areas to truly think about and decide, is it day one or one day? I think I just sh- jotted four down, but honestly, you guys, we could come up with a million. I, I just named a bunch right there, right? So number one, loving others big and maybe like really feeling for people this week and, and, and experiencing some of these things this week. Like, are we loving others really big? Like that quality time with friends, not just like time, because time is not always quality time, right? Don't put off visits. Don't put off conversations. And you guys know me. I'm typically all about success, success, success. And that's mainly what this podcast is. But loving others big is bigger than that. It's bigger than success. It's bigger than the money that you have. Because at the end of your life, you you can't take the money with you in a hearse, right? It's You're leaving behind a legacy. You're leaving behind memories. And the only thing any of us want at the end of our life is more time. More time. Nobody on their deathbed is saying, I wish I had 10 more dollars, 100 more dollars, or that one more promotion. It's that quality time, one more conversation, one more dinner, one more phone call. Don't put off visits, conversations, and building memories. At the end of our life, the only one thing that people wish they had more of, and that's time. And when you think about that, realize the minutes that we do have now. And I want to share a story with you. I'm, I'm certainly not super proud of it, you guys, but we always have like such eye openers for me. I have a morning routine. I have a morning routine, you guys, and I am like rain man with my morning routine. I wake up, okay, on my way to the bathroom with every step. I thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think of all the, the steps and I actually have quite a few steps between my, between my bed and my toilet when I pee in the morning. Right. So I do that. And then I come downstairs and I make my, my tea. I make my detox tea. I put a fizz in it. You guys, I could do actually a whole episode on this. That's the best way that I start my day. And if you're think, if you know fizz, then you and I were on the same page. But if you don't know fizz, reach out to me, okay? Because you need fizz in your life. So I take what I call a tizzy and I sit down, I meditate, I listen to my Bible app. You guys, I have committed to reading the Bible every single day for 365 days to read it from cover to cover. So I have the option on this, it's called the Bible recap. It's on the Bible app because people might ask me about this and then you could search the Bible recap and it reads, uh, it reads chapters to me every single day. And then I follow it up with the Bible Recap Podcast, which explains the chapters if there's some that you don't really need to, uh, that you don't understand. So I do my Bible app, I read, I journal, I do my affirmations. That's my first hour every single day. And so my parents, my parents now, they're 81 years old and they're 76 years old. My mom's 76. And they off, they they visit me pretty often, but let's be honest, not often enough, right? So probably every few months I see my parents and sometimes my mom stays a bit longer. My mom is a really early riser. So my dad is usually up after I do my hour um, morning routine. And no matter how early I get up, there's my mom. So sometimes this is, I, I don't even like to say this out loud, but every now and then I wish she would just get up an hour later just so I could do my routine. And then I'm so happy to enjoy her all day, but I'm a very big believer. Look, I love my kids too. I really don't want to see them in that hour. So I feel guilty saying it about my mom, but I don't feel guilty saying it about my kids. I deliberately get up an hour earlier. So I have that time. So I could easily do my routine, right? And, and I could do my routine somewhere else. I could go sit somewhere else instead of just sitting in my den. But then I realized my parents were just here for three days. My mom is like clockwork. She's up at the crack of dawn. So for me, instead of worrying about my morning routine, I spent that hour talking. I moved my routine to the night and sat with my mom, realizing, honestly, you guys, I was like, what is wrong with me? How many people? I'm so blessed to still have my mom. I'm 51 years old. And there will be a time in my life I know that I would do anything to put my book down and talk to my mother. So I let that day be day one where I don't wish that she would sleep that extra hour. My way of justifying it is there's so many hours in a day, but being fully present, 
being where you are. Talk to the ones around you. Ask them questions. Take serious interest in their life. Be engaged. There are so many distractions today. We are surrounded by distractions. There is nothing more important on Instagram than the people that are in your life. I mean, think about it. Think about going on Instagram and you see some random woman, random man, or random couple, or random person in your business, and you're watching them and listening to them like you know them. And you don't. We don't. Okay? But then you have somebody sitting right beside you or right in front of you, and they're not getting your undivided attention, right? Check in on people. Breathe life into people around you. Believing in others. Being generous, giving. Too often we think that we don't have enough to give. You do. It's abundant. It increases the flow of abundance into your life. It's an incredible feeling. You know, I've been on a tithing journey of giving 10% of my gross income since 2020. And I don't say that to brag. I say it because maybe I could be an influence in your life and you could do the same thing. It's changed my life. I give to God first. God, you know, God gets my first and my best and he uses it to, to bless people that are less fortunate than me. Don't put off giving. Allow today to be your day one. When we hold on so tight to what we have, we hold back the abundance that is waiting for us. Money flows like a river, but it's up to us to keep the flow going. And I want to share a story with you that just happened yesterday, actually. A leader in my company and a friend, Mariah Bertram, raised money for orphans in Haiti. And you guys, I was, she was, all different items were being posted. There was Gucci items. There was Louis Vuitton items. There was gowns. And, and I was happy. I reached out and I said, what, what, what would you like me to donate? Like I'm in. And she said, um, well, there was some top leaders and what they requested was time. They would like time with you. So long story short, um, there was, you know, $8,000 was raised, um, two different teams of six to spend two nights at my Palm Beach home learning and and masterminding with me. Love made that happen. When you love big, amazing things happen. Now, I I also want to humanize myself because my first reaction was, okay, just let me breathe and think about it. Like I was coming and offering, you know, maybe a scarf or a bracelet. I've got four kids. I'm very, I have a very involved life. My, my son, Tyler is a senior in college this year. He's a two-time All-American. I don't want to miss a game. I have a big business. Ryan's a high school. He's a star lacrosse player. I don't want to miss that. Bailey and Ryan are going to college. And in August, I'm going to Africa with my son, Tyler, in July. I'm not in Palm Beach all the time. So I had a million of these thoughts that were obviously me, 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 me based rolling around in my head. And, And I wasn't thinking this because the potential earners weren't worthy, but but sometimes I overextend with good intentions and I got a bit overwhelmed. But then within seconds that changed, love showed up and I'm here to love big. I love the company that I'm aligned with. I love helping other people succeed. That's what we're going to do in that time. I love challenging others to be their best. So that's what they're going to get for two days. I love getting to know people. I love making a difference in the world. I love helping others less fortunate. Those leaders raised $8,000 to donate to children. And that money will change the trajectory of, of those children's lives. So do you see what love can do when it's united for good? Start loving bigger, giving more. And I'm so grateful that God equipped me with the gift of leadership. I am so grateful that I built a business to the level that others would even want to donate to make a difference and donate money to spend time with me. And on top of that, buy a plane ticket to come to my home to spend time with me. That's God using me for love. So really love big. Number two, take bold actions on your goals and dreams. I'm all about bold, but let's not underestimate the power of consistency. The definition of momentum is consistent activity compounded over time. This is what keeps people in the one day mindset. I want to achieve my goal, but they think they have to, they think of all they need to do to achieve it, right? Do something daily, 
Track your progress. Make a list of non-negotiables to do daily that are moving you closer to your dreams. Every day that you are on this earth, it's a gift. What are you, are you doing what you love? Are you doing what sets your soul on fire? If not, what are you waiting for? The perfect timing? Because I'm here to tell you that the perfect timing doesn't exist. I remember when I started my business, you guys, I told these couple of these stories on stages recently. I was a keynote in California and I started my business. I was really excited. I was really excited. I knew where I was going, but I certainly did not know a lot, right? And I was so excited to share my my products and I was so excited to have people join my business, okay? And I'm sharing this with you because sometimes we look for perfect, okay? So I wanna share the first story with you. So I started my business. I was so excited. I was like 20 minutes into my business and I'm like, I can't wait for somebody to try these products. But on top of that, I really want to share what I'm doing. I want to share what I'm doing because it might be a fit for somebody else. Like I was like, what do you do when you find a good restaurant you love? Like you want to tell everybody, right? I, I, my heart was so full to tell people. So I went over to Heather's house. Now I knew Heather because our boys went to kindergarten together, but I didn't like know her that well. It was the first time I was ever in her house. I was like, oh, love your house. I have something to share with you. And I, I started sharing with her and I was telling her about the products and I was telling her about the business. I'm like, you need to listen to this call. You have to listen to this call. It's, it's, it's 30 minutes. It's going to tell you about the products. It's going to tell you about the business. I'm calling you back in 45 minutes. We need to have a conversation. Here's some samples. You need to try these products. So I called her back and she was like, first of all, that was not a call about the products or the business. That was a training call. I was like, oh, all right. Well, perfect. Now you're trained. So then I was like going on and on about the products and the business and the company and all of these things. And she goes, you know what? I'm going to do this with you. I've been looking for products for my son. I've been looking for something. I am going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to do this with you. I'm like, amazing. So she's like, I'm going to come over tomorrow and, I'm, and, I'm, and we're going to sit down. We're going to have a conversation. I'm going to do this. I'm like, okay, great. So the next day, you guys, she called me and all I heard was, I'm not going to be able to come over today. So all I heard was, wah, 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 wah. Again, not out of mal- mal- intent. I was like so excited, so excited for her to come over and want her to get these products for her son and everything else. And so she ended up coming because I was like, you, you need to come. So she ended up coming. She walked, she lives about or lived because I don't live there anymore, probably about 10 houses away, and she, which is fine to walk with your baby stroller because she had a baby too, but it was raining out. So I'm like, that's so weird that she's walking. So anyway, we talk, we have a great time. Her heart is beating. My heart is beating. She's so excited. She orders some products and all is good. She leaves. I see her husband that night and I'm like, you know, Heather's so excited. He goes, she is. He goes, did you know that Heather got robbed? I'm like, what? What do you mean? She got robbed? I I was with her all day. How could she not tell me she got robbed? So he's like, she got robbed. So I called up Heather. I go, Heather, did you get robbed? She goes, yeah. I go, oh, I go, why didn't you tell me? She goes, I did. I go, you did. What did I say? And she goes, you said, I don't care. Walk now. What happened? So that could sound insensitive, you guys, but I was just so excited about sharing this with her. Now, if I were to look back on that and be like, I'm waiting for perfection, I mean, that that was kind of like a, a little bit of a shit show. Like that was not good. But she 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 bought and she joined because she knew that everything was coming from my heart. I remember my second person that I talked to. She was somebody that I like, I knew from the gym and you know that you know somebody like you say hi to them every day, but you like, you're too far into that relationship to ask them what their name is. Right. So long story short, I was done. No, she was on the treadmill. No, I was getting off the treadmill. I always forget this part of the story. I was getting off the treadmill. I ran my three miles. I was getting off. She was getting on the treadmill. So I'm like, I'm going to get on the treadmill because I want to talk to her when she's done. Well, she ended up running five miles, you guys. That was a point in my life. I didn't run eight miles. So I thought one of two things are happening. I'm either dropping dead on this treadmill or she's going to be interested in my products and or my business. And long story short, like it just got funnier and funnier after that. My hair was all over the place. I could barely breathe. I could barely get two words out. She ended up joining my business. And I share that with you because what I just say, are you waiting for perfection? What if I would have waited for perfection? There are two incredible teams in my business right now because I was brave enough to not wait for perfection. Like nothing about those two scenarios were perfect, but I took action. 
bold action. I wasn't waiting. It was day one and I was on the move. So number three, living a healthy lifestyle. Our body is our vessel. Every single thing begins in our gut. What we put in our body matters. So often we think of a healthy lifestyle as a diet. Our brains immediately go to restrictions, takeaways. Eating healthy feels amazing. Not being bloated feels amazing. Sleeping well feels amazing. Fueling our body with whole foods versus processed foods feels amazing. Did you set health goals for yourself this year? Are you moving your body daily? Turn off the TV. Get outside, stop scrolling, exercise. I saw this meme and it was really powerful. Maybe you've seen it too. Now, if you're a parent, this is really powerful, but if you're not a parent, you could apply it like just change the wording to significant other, somebody that you love deeply. So here it is. And this is, I don't know if this is word for word. This is from my memory. Most parents would die for their kids, but will you live for your kids? So what does that mean? When we're not healthy, we're shortening our lifespan. We're shortening our quality of life. We're we're like, I'm 51. Taking care of my body now is going to allow me to run around with my grandchildren when I'm in my 70s, my 80s, and my 90s. When When we cannot walk around and have energy to do things as we get older, we cut down our quality of life. There are no guarantees in life. But when we do things that we know can shorten our life, and or decrease the quality of life, are we really living for our kids? Are we living for the ones we love? Like that to me was pretty powerful. So allow today to be your day one. Number four, you guys, I'm pretty passionate about this. I like, I can't let it go. And I find a way to squeeze it into almost every single podcast, leveling up your friends, leveling up the people you spend time with. Your network is your net worth. Now people could hear that like, oh, I don't make money. Is it oh, is it about making money off your network? No. Net worth isn't just dollars and cents. Your net worth is the way you think. Your net worth is your energy. Your net worth is your level of conversation, dreams, goals. Your network is your net worth. You can't swim with the sharks if you're hanging out with minnows. You can't fly like an eagle if you're hanging out with pigeons. Now, some of you could say, well, these are my friends. This is what I'm going to say. Make new ones or be okay with where you are. Is it someday I'm going to, you know, or is it day one? Be willing to spend time alone. Go build your dreams. Go become the best version of you. Put your head down and be the person that you want to attract in your life. Change your circle. Our circle moves all the time. You can make, you can take someone from your inner circle and move them to your outer circle. My inner circle changes all the time. I protect it. There isn't any negativity in my inner circle. There isn't any small dreams in my inner circle. There isn't any gossip in my inner circle. There aren't people that allow themselves to be in unhealthy relationships in my inner circle. There aren't people who don't push me, challenge me, and inspire in my inner circle. There aren't people who make excuses, justify mediocre, blame, and who aren't committed to excellence in my inner circle. And that might sound cruel. I didn't say they're not in my life. I said they're not in my inner circle. And that might sound cruel, but it's not. It's kind. I protect my vision. I protect my positivity, my light, and my vision at all costs. You are the sum of the five people you hang around with. If you don't love where you are in life, look around you. Are the ones that you spend time with, are they crushing goals? Are they living a healthy lifestyle? Are they passionate about their life? Do they breathe life into others? Are they giving back or sitting around complaining about money and doing nothing about it? Are they talking about goals or are they talking about people? Do you have drama in your life? Friends, when you talk about drama, you create drama. I don't have drama in my life and I don't have drama in my business, period. You attract what you are. Let today be the day that you're committed to growing yourself by becoming who you want in your life. And the list can go on and on. Think of the areas in your life that today could be day one or one day, saving money, paying off debt, calling that friend, telling that person that you love them, moving your business forward, making an impact, becoming the best version of you. We waste so much time. We think and we overthink. We think ourselves into distraction. We think so much that we become paralyzed. 
Take that step. Today is day one. Move forward. I feel to my core so many amazing miracles happen this year. Good, abundant, success, love, like just overall miracles, powerful shifts. Go and create that wave. Take the leap. One day isn't a day of the week. Today is your day one. I love you, friends. So next week, we're going to be talking about habits of millionaires. Millionaires. 